today to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Moguls, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Health USA, The Goodman Factor, Chiropractic Rocks, Cairo Tax Pro, and Digital Hustle. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 215 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I am your co-host, Luke Millette. Here's your host, Jim Chester. So today we had the opportunity of interviewing Darren Murphy. And if you want to know more about the training culture, stay tuned. So you're in the same beautiful state as us, uh, Dr. Darren Murphy coming in from the Front Range and we are coming in from the Western Slope and uh, both of us are in the beautiful state of Colorado. So this is episode 215 of the Cairo Hustle podcast and I just want to give you a warm welcome to our show. All right, much love and appreciation guys. Pumped and excited to be on and share all the goods and knowledge that I have within me for all the great listeners out there today. Yeah, I was really pumped to see that you uh, accepted our invitation for this episode. And I know that we always bring the truth and keep free speech alive in this beautiful profession of chiropractic. And you're kind of asking us off camera, hey, what sets you guys apart from like other chiropractic podcasts? And I shared with you some of like the backstory, pun intended. And uh, just wanted to kind of uh, touch on some stuff with you about you, your career and sure. you as the practitioner. And I know every chiropractor has a very unique story of how they got into chiropractic and maybe the stamp that they're putting on this profession. So maybe you could share with our audience today what your chiropractic story is and a little bit about uh, where you are today. Awesome. Absolutely. What we're, we'll try to do is uh, condense a 24-year story uh, leading up to school and getting to school into about five or less minutes. Sound good? Sounds great. So I had always wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. I was the kid that got hurt, banged up, in surgeries, put back together, you know, screws in, saws in, you name it. Um, I was an orthopedic surgeon's dream patient, right? And so I I was always better once I got out of surgeries. I was always made better, right? And so that concept was that you fixing people was always there um, from the get-go with this healing potential and capability. So I did pre-med at CU Boulder, just up to 36, and came to the last uh, semester of school. I applied to 12 schools, and I got rejected one after the other after the other. Every week for 12 weeks, I, ha- I got 12 rejection letters. And so that was, you know, the deer in the headlights that, you know, medical school, the allopathic model wasn't really meant for me. Clearly devastating, obviously. So I decided to do nothing I've ever done and go into entrepreneurial businesses with my two brothers down in Highlands Ranch, which is South Denver. And for two years, we were serial entrepreneurs. We created companies. We got our asses kicked in business, um, lost money, made some money, but came about even overall. And, you know, working 15, 16, 17 hour days, nose to the grindstone, all go, no quit, best years of our life. Seems like they were just gone in an instant. So I found myself in my parents' basement for three years uh, at 24, 25, and 26, uh, really wondering what I was doing with my life. And chiropractic through my brother, Sean, came in out of nowhere. I started getting adjusted. I had a bunch of stuff from a football, a bad football injury back in the day. And before you know it, um, I found myself at Life West and Dr. Joe Dispenza, of all people, was speaking at Champions Weekend that weekend. And obviously, if you had any thought about becoming a chiropractor and then you listen to Dr. Joe, uh, it's going to be pretty easy that that's going to be a a solid life path. And three weeks later, I started at the beginning of 2014, May of 17, graduated, uh, started at the source in Oakland with Dr. Brett Jones and Jordan Fairley. And as of a year ago, September 2019, I opened up the source here in Denver. And so um, bada bing, bada boom, there it was. I would say the one thing, though, that has been the the thread throughout all of that has been uh, an obsession on the path to mastery. I've always wanted to master something, right? Uh, You know, as Arno would say, you know, uh, uh, mastery is not a destination, it's a journey, you know? And so training, the art of chiropractic training and being dedicated and obsessed to training the art of chiropractic has been something that's been woven into everything I've done through school and even post-school these last three, three and a half years. 
And if there's one thing I would really love to share with people listening is that who are, who are focused on being an amazing chiropractic adjuster is that it does not happen easily. If it was easy, everybody would do it. It can be very trying. It can be very testing. And it, it is, a, it is a, a thing and a skill worth mastering and worth putting in an incredible amount of time into. Uh, because the results, as I'm sure you have shared with many, many guests on this show, are worth the time, the energy, and the investment that it takes to learn how to do it at a high level. Well, one of the things I've noticed about you is you're in this uh, new uprising of bringing the profession back to the adjustment rather than just uh, focusing on marketing and business. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that's really important to discuss. And one of those things that you're involved in is this uh, group called the Kairos Culture. Um, mm -hmm. I think that makes you unique in this, this area, in this arena of chiropractic um, uprising, if we can. And I think that if you could talk a little bit about Kairos Culture and what really gave you the um, motivation to stick with that group and to now facilitate trainings with that group. Sure. Yeah, I mean... That's a long story. Sorry about the phone in the background. My bad. Um, You're the man. Started very, very early. Uh, my second week of chiropractic school. Um, a few people were like, hey, come check out this club. This is where all the really great adjusters hang out. I was like, I'm all about that. Let's do it, right? And so I started second week, first quarter, and I trained with KTC, Kairos Training Culture, all the way through. I was a, a facilitator at the school level for 10 quarters. Uh, and that's because from the very beginning, I saw these incredible adjusters that were like not even halfway through school. And I'm like, what are they doing? And they're training. They're in break rooms between classes. They're doing band work and ball work and doing like drops on these uh, balloon dummies or these cushion dummies that have a spine infused into them that have been handed down from these really great adjusters that came before them. And so I was... I was clued in very, very quickly into this, this training stream of students in school. And I saw what it did uh, almost within the first few quarters, right? Like hands-on, 6 a.m., two to four times a week at Life West. And now we have clubs at, I think, six, seven or eight schools around the country. And so um, it's an attitude thing that school, what, what school will teach you is not enough to be a great adjuster coming out of school. I know that might rub some people the wrong way, especially if it's a professor or maybe some presidents of universities watching this, but hello, hello, hello. The technique courses in school are not enough. It's not enough. It's really sad. The type of people that I see adjusting in student clinic, if that's all they're doing. And so it's a hunger. It's a, it's a thirst to be to be awesome and to give a great masterful adjustment that has the ability to repattern and reprocess and reprogram the central nervous system to, to connect and to communicate with innate intelligence on an incredibly effective and efficient manner to help people heal and reorganize. That's what I always chased after and I still chase after it today and I will continue to chase after it uh, for the rest of my life and the rest of my career. I'll never be, I'll never be satisfied with my adjusting ability. And you know, when I teach camps, I talk about this concept called divine unsatisfaction. And that's a, it's a bit of an oxymoron, but it means I'm happy with where I'm at now, but I'm also unsatisfied with where I'm at now because I know I can be better. I know I can deliver a better adjusting product and adjusting experience for people. And I think if that message is taught more and more and more, People will hear it more and more and more, and you'll get these students coming into school or maybe even halfway through school or almost done with school will be like, oh, snap, I need to start my training and commit to this path because the world doesn't need more crappy chiropractors. The world needs more masterful chiropractors, and that is one of my missions and my purposes with uh, Kairos Training Culture is to uplift, you know, a rising tide lifts all ships so to say, you all, you all heard that. And that's what KTC is for. Mm -hmm. It's awesome to hear how passionate you are 
And I think it inspires people to just hear your voice when you come from a place of, I did this to become who I am now. And I'm not just another warm, warm body feeling the title of chiropractor. I think that that's a really important thing to understand is um, we understand chiropractic from a whole different level of uh, integration when it comes from the different school models, um, the concept of what a medipractor is to what a chiropractor is to, you know, being able to deliver the goods and just hitting the flying sevens. And, you know, we understand like so much about, you know, x-ray analysis and neither Luca and I are chiropractors. And we went over that before uh, we started chatting today. You know, as I've gotten to hear what you do, um, it's really an, an up level perception of being able to find, find it, fix it, leave it alone, Gonstead methodology. Right. Be able to take somebody's life that trusts you as their chiropractor and to know that you have all of the, the strategy down with your hands and your schooling to be able to change somebody's uh, um, dynamics of how they present with. And I think that that's one of the most important things is people, what they know is I don't feel good. Can you help me? But what you know is, yeah, I've trained for a bunch of hours and I've done a lot of uh, studying to become a chiropractor and I passed my national boards, but also I did all this great things to learn how to actually deliver the adjustment and you're in good hands. And I, I think that that's one of the things that I appreciate most about you and your energy is you're like, dude, I got this. Like, I I'm ready. Put me in, coach. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. Um, it comes down to certainty at the end of the day. When more chiropractors are operating with more certainty, the consciousness of this planet will begin to change. Right? As we step out of this medical allopathic sickness care model and into a wellness facilitation optimization model, we're really going to see a lot of things change then. Right? We're going to go uh, from, oh, I'm, I'm in pain, I'm sick, uh, I can't move, to one of, I love my life, I love the connection that I feel within my body, my spirit, and my soul, and I'm content and I'm happy in this life, and I know how to assess and acknowledge my needs, and then I have the strategies to go and get them met. Like, it's, it's a big shift, absolutely, and, and I know you know, if there's another big message that I can share is that we need more great chiropractors and I'm here to inspire the next generation. And as I say in my bio, you know, I was taught from a very early age by you guys know him, Dr. Jacob Merrick, one flame lights another. And I'm here to be a big ass fire. Maybe not the best thing to say with all the fires going on right now, but I think you guys get the point. It's like the brighter I shine, the more I hold the space for other people to shine as well. And it's not about how, how much I can shine. It's about how much light, how, how much knowledge, and how much I can get to transmit through me and my, and my ability to show up and be present for people in their learning process and that I just be an inspiration. You know? And I think if there's more chiropractors out there doing that, this profession will grow more quickly and human consciousness will evolve more rapidly. Well, that kind of leads into the next question. How do you think the world would change if every person on the planet started getting adjusted regularly? Sure. Uh, well, the word that just comes to my mind would be connection, right? Because when you're adjusted, your brain's connected to your body and your body is connected back up to your brain, neurologically speaking. When you are more connected, like I just said, you can assess and become aware of the needs of your body at a higher degree. When you're more aware, you then have more strategies to get your needs met. Am I thirsty? Do I need movement? Do I need recuperation? Do I need exercise? Things like that. And so as more people uh, become adjusted, we have a more personally connected um, humanity as well as an interpersonal humanity as well. Uh, things that evolve out of that is compassion, caring, understanding. You move away from the... Uh, all the crap you see on media, which is the, the hate and the death and, oh, my God, the, the, the coronavirus is going to come kill you to bolster your immune system for crying out loud. Get adjusted. Eat well. Move well. Think well. Be well. And you've got to worry about it. 
right? Like this is an inside out job. This is not an outside in kind of job. And the more people that get adjusted feel that and recognize that. Excuse me, let me say that again. The more people that are well adjusted, you can be adjusted like shit. It happens. It happens all too often. And you can be adjusted well. Go have an adjustment by a masterful adjuster and compare it to one where you get your neck cranked to the side and then you get your facets jammed and, and you tell me the difference, right? One hurts and then one is going to expand your consciousness. Well, I, I, I love this word freedom. Mm -hmm. I believe the chiropractic adjustment equals freedom. Sure. And this word connection also has a very profound impact on the word freedom. Sure. And the more that we're connected, the more free we are. Absolutely. And so when we think about the masterful adjuster, a lot of that's preparation. And the reason that most people aren't connected and don't have more freedoms is because they're not prepared. Yes. And they don't think about what it is that they're involved with. They just kind of show up. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about life is when you prepare for life, that's when you start actually getting the gift of reciprocation because you're open to receiving because you prepared for it. Yes. And I think a lot of people just want to force it. And that's what happens with these adjustments that you're talking yeah. about. These shitty adjustments is the chiropractor forces it. Mm -hmm. Back yeah. to what Arno calls MLS is making love to the spine. Sure. And most people don't even know what the hell that means. They think it's just like some type of like acronym for like a seminar title. But really when we talk about like being prepared is what the early stages of what Comeric and Arno designed is now what you guys are actually starting to facilitate and train on and take to the masses and teach camps and take these like sage wisdom warriors that teach people how to actually adjust and make that the norm. Sure. It's a, you know, a lot of us in, in KTC, especially at, you know, the facilitator levels at KTC have all sat at the feet of these masters and we all incredibly acknowledge and appreciate and are incredibly grateful for all of their work, their wisdom to, to help, to help us come to an understanding. When I say us, I mean like me and Brett and Jordan Fairley and Bonham and, you know, Caitlin and Kate Jones and Madison and like all these people. It's like they've transmitted so much knowledge into us. How foolish would it be of us to not go do something great with it? You know, like who said Marvin Tolsky said it. I think he said it best. He's like, he's, it was a year or two ago. He's like, you guys are the generation that this profession has been waiting for for over 80 years. Like I kind of feel the weight of that comment, you know, I'm like, damn, you know, a master, if there's anything who, if there's anybody who, I think can be called a master in this profession. I think it is Marvin. Uh, when you got like 55, 56 years, you've created techniques, you've done something different nearly every year in practice. Yeah, you're a master, right? And so to hear him say that and to be part of that generation um, carries great weight and carries great responsibility. And I'm so grateful to be a part of a group um, like Kairos Training Culture who, who can, I think, prove up on that. Who, who, who can take that torch, who can uh, lead by example uh, and lead with reverence um, for all those that have come before us. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. yeah. So with the way things are going right now, how do you see chiropractic unfolding in the next 20 years? Well, it could go a lot of different ways. Um, my intention and my hope is that messages like this and, and messages of becoming obsessed about the chiropractic adjustment, becoming obsessed about communicating the value and benefits of the chiropractic adjustment, reach as many chiropractors, potential chiropractors, uh, chiropractic practice members, and just general public interested in the philosophy, the incredibly rich philosophy that our our, our profession is founded and built upon. And if that happens, I believe nothing, nothing but the advancement of human consciousness is possible over the course of the next 20 years. It's gonna, like I said, this is an inside job. 
chiropractic itself is an inside job, inside job, but the profession as itself is an inside job as well. Um, you've probably heard other people talk about this before, but like chiropractors talk so much shit on other chiropractors. It is the silliest damn thing for us to eat our own people, right? Instead of taking a nonviolent communication strategy of asking questions for deeper and deeper layers and levels of understanding before passing judgments. If we did that more as chiropractors, this whole profession would change. So we have to change ourselves first, I think is the answer to your question, Luke. Um, if we're able to change ourselves as a, as a profession, as a whole, we will do great, great, great things. But it starts from the inside first. Mm -hmm. The inside work is definitely what sets the standard. And that's mm -hmm. why some teams win and that's why some teams lose. And that's why some guys aren't the best performers, but it's good to have them in the clubhouse. And I think it's important yeah. for people to have there's, – there's all levels of uh, necessity when it comes to uh, making a movement work. And I really think that that's what Luke and I do really well within the profession is – um, we might not be delivering the adjustment, but we deliver the media and okay. we need all facets of the, the profession to start dropping the ego down, realize that we're all in this, uh, movement as a unit mm -hmm. and that the stronger that we are in communication and respect and asking questions that gets us to the higher level of consciousness, which delivers better messaging to people. And it gives people more of a, um, a reverence, like you said earlier, for truth. And so many people need truth right now more than ever. And they believe what you said earlier, too, is the uh, mainstream media, they're, they're following whatever this damn corona thing. And really, they just have no idea what it means to be prepared and have self-responsibility. And I think that that goes to the same conversation for the chiropractor, as well as for the average Joe is that we all need to have a little bit more preparation and more self-responsibility, but we also need to ask questions of each other and to not be afraid of what somebody might say mm -hmm. and understand that there's a reason why we get formulated the way that we do have those responses, and it's natural. Um, we might not have a lot of experience at being challenged. We might not have a lot of experience at being asked tough questions. Mm -hmm. And when people do get challenged and have tough questions, that stretches their comfort. And when somebody gets out of their comfort zone, that makes them expand as a human and that makes them shine different and that opens them up different and they can't just stay down here anymore with this bad posture. They have to rise up sure. and realize that they're being addressed and they're being, you know, given a chance. And I think that that's what it really comes down to is giving people a chance to be heard and to uh, take interest in other people's needs and that's what I love about chiropractic from day one. You guys always do such a good job of bringing somebody in, asking them what's going on, how much concern it is, and then you tell them how you can help them. And I think that that's one of the most honest things about chiropractic is you guys always care about the individual. And you're always willing to have that tough conversation. But you also have to have the tough conversation back to them and say, okay, well, now this is your responsibility. I'm going to do my best for you, but now I need you to contribute. Yeah, there's a huge, there's a huge concept, and I think uh, it gets misconstrued and confused um, along the way, and it's, it's that of being a facilitator versus that of being a healer, right? A lot of people say, oh, Dr. Darren, thank you for healing me, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer you to my great healer friend, Dr. Darren, or Dr. Seth, or Dr. Ryan, or, or any of the docs here at the source, and I'm always like, ooh, not exactly, right? Like, I don't feel I heal anybody. People heal themselves. I heal myself. You guys heal yourselves. Everyone that lays on these tables, I believe, ultimately heals themselves because their innate intelligence is on the job 24-7, 365, birth to death, right? What we do as chiropractors is that we facilitate the freeing, like you said, of their nervous systems. And as we do that, like you just said, they come from flexion states, poor posture, like this, to one of extension states, right? And that change is a facilitation. It's not a healing. It's a facilitation from one state of being to another, right? And I've always felt that that's one of the greatest uh, duties 
of a chiropractor is to facilitate that state change. It's a frequency. It's a vibrational. It's an energetic change in the brain, right? Like, let, let, let's get on board with this. It's not about moving bones. It's not about the crack in the pot. It's not about being a crack addict, right? Not about that. It's about repatterning and reprocessing the brain. So the brain sends down different messages to the body than it does before. That's the responsibility of every chiropractor. That's why you check and adjust the subluxations so that the brain is more optimized. And I think more and more people that get on board with that and more chiropractors that get on board with that, we will have a greater impact, a greater message, and we will be received much better by the general public. Mm -hmm. So who have been some of your heroes of you as you've gone on your path to be where you are today? And if you could pick one special person to chat with for an hour, who would it be? Hands down, Nikola Tesla. Hands down. That guy or that alien, whatever you want to call him, who came into a, into a human physical body incarnated here years ago, um, what, what he did on his time in this earth was uh, nothing short of an absolute, um, well, some would say miracle, right? Um, was he connected to the other realms? Yes, I believe he was. Uh, just look what he has, like 900-something patents. Who else has 900-something patents that are still good for this day? Now, most of his work was stolen when he died, but that's for another story, right? Um, his understanding of energetics and physics, so much of what he figured out is what we're now beginning to communicate about the chiropractic adjustment, right? It just took time and society years to get a clue what the hell he was saying, right? Absolutely incredible. Another guy who is also on the level of Nikola Tesla. Uh, it's right here. I'm going to show this to you guys. Walter Russell, right here. His book called The Universal One. This is uh, another, I would say, divine human being who was connected to the other realms that brought uh, information and understanding from who knows where into this earth. And a lot of the chiropractic adjustment is actually in this book as well. And so what I love, I love information that um, doesn't always come from human sources, right? Like I love books um, and channels, right? I know this might be a little weird for this channel, but I know chiropractors are cool people in general. And so um, information that's not always coming from earth, but coming from people that are able to connect to other realms. Right? Is this, is that a, do you guys get what I'm throwing down here? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the, the, there's actually things I want to touch on with you about this because I think that some of the lexicon that you, that chiropractors have derived, that you shared the word subluxation earlier, and now you're talking about innate intelligence and universal intelligence. Sure, sure. Um, I think that those are some of the things that I would like you to maybe expand on based on what you're going to share with us. And why those um, uh, phraseologies and and why that's kind of being rubbed out or wanting to be rubbed out of the profession? Okay, we'll start from the top. Okay, because uh, you got to back step before we can go forward. So a lot of people don't know this, but chiropractic did not just pop into the head of of D. D. Palmer and he's like, oh, I'm going to move a bone in this way. Oh, I'm going to adjust this Harvey Lillard guy. No. D.D. Palmer was in a deep meditative state. D.D. Palmer, by the way, was a magnetic healer. He was, an, uh, he was into the esoteric knowledge and esoteric wisdom. Chiropractic, the concept of adjusting the spine, thus the brain, came to him deep in meditation. He channeled chiropractic through a spiritual entity. You made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Moguls, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Health USA, The Goodman Factor, Chiropractic Rocks, Cairo Tax Pro, and Digital Hustle. Let's hustle. Let me say that again. The beginnings of chiropractic was channeled to D.D. Palmer. Look, look in the book, I think it's called Spirits of Mercy by D.D. Palmer. 
And that book explains the very, very deep spiritual esoteric beginnings of chiropractic. Chiropractic came from spirit. A lot of people don't want that to be known, right? Because that might degrade the meaning or degrade the power or make chiropractic seem woo woo, ushy wushy, whatever, right? But I believe that's what makes it the most powerful, right? It didn't come from someone's brain, it came from all that is. It came from universal intelligence, right? Universal intelligence, the wisdom that hangs the planets in their orbit, the wisdom that allows the earth to spin on its axis, right? Innate intelligence is the innate intelligence that runs our bodies. Are we thinking about how we replicate a million cells every second and what we're doing with the garbage of a, of a million cells that are degraded every second? Are we thinking about breathing? Are we thinking about our heart beating? What's running that? What's controlling that? Some people might call that God or Christ consciousness or something like that. We as chiropractors call it innate intelligence, the innate intelligence that we're born with. Everybody is born with it. Humans, animals, you name it. We're born with it, right? I believe that is an indisputable fact. I do not think about making a million cells every second and the millions of biochemical processes that, that takes place in all those cells every microsecond, right? Hard, hard to argue. Subluxation, like you talked about, Jim, a subluxation can be on any number of levels from a biomechanical misposition all the way, I know this is going to sound really weird for some people, but a, to a potential past life trauma that was never dealt with or healed. I know I probably just lost some people there, but that's okay, right? You have a full spectrum of what a subluxation could be. Most people understand it as a less than luxation, meaning a less than joint dislocation, which is causing interference between the brain and the body, body and the brain. We as chiropractors detect and correct subluxations to increase the nervous system flow between brain and body. So everything communicates correctly. But now back to the original point, why might the origins of chiropractic want to be snuffed out? Well, if your medicine, allopathic medicine, which I will acknowledge and say has its place in time, absolutely does. I would not be where I am today without medical technology and know-how and surgery and it saves lives, absolutely does but it is a big machine, right? It is an absolutely monstrous machine with an infinite level of funding and people that are all about it. It wants to eat everything else. Chiropractic being one of them. Chiropractic has had a long and storied history about its fight with the modern medical system, right? So it's another level of wanting to erase spirit and the work that spirit does with its work on earth. I believe ultimately that that's why chiropractic continues to take hit after hit after hit and people lose their certainty within chiropractic because they don't want to be known as one of the chiropractors that believe that, right? Did he palm it? He, he, he wrote the book that said, this is how it started, right? And so the reason I, I've gone into length about this is to one, help people become more aware and two, to help people think, why is a profession that is founded on a spiritual transmission trying to be drowned out and ultimately destroyed by certain powers that be throughout its 125 year history? Right? It's a big question, right? I think the more chiropractors we have preaching that message and staying true to our origins with the addition of modern understanding of quantum physics and neurology and all of the great sciences that support chiropractic, I think really we're going to go somewhere then. Yeah. That was you, a lot. No, sorry. That was a lot. Think on that. A lot based on the question of, you know, where we are today based on our historical um, methods and the historical texts, I really believe that people – they look for clarity mm -hmm. and they're like, well, my insurance doesn't pick it up. Um, I don't care if I have a subluxation. 
And that's where we have to turn this as to like a, a mom and pop conversation as to do great stuff is like, yeah, um, chiropractic did start by a Canadian named uh, Dee Dee Palmer. <laughs> and he worked with clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. And he was somebody that was a uh, somewhat of a, uh, a gypsy. Eccentric, eccentric fellow? Yeah, he was a gypsy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, he started a movement of a natural healing art, mm -hmm. which never existed before. And now, like you said, it's 125 years in the making. And a guy named Marv Towski said, hey, there's a golden age of chiropractic right now. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being one of those facilitators. And we needed you guys to come along to protect what Dee Dee, uh, BJ Palmer called the sacred trust which is the chiropractic profession. Mm -hmm. And I think when we talk about like this historical resonance and where we are today, and you're like, hey, man, I just gotta lay down my 24 years and five minutes before we can get like, get this party started. And to talk about like you having this medical repair life and you thinking that you're gonna be somebody with the tools and instruments to like repair people. Now mm -hmm. you're using the tools and instruments of your hands, but also with your knowledge. Yes. And I think that that's really where we're at today is you have such a, a, a vast um, arena of knowledge that you're pulling from and that you're like, I might be beyond some of you and you are, and you're, you might have lost some people and you probably did, but <laughs> what you're doing is you're setting a standard for yourself mm -hmm. and you're standing by yourself and you're standing alone and then you build people around with you. And I think that's what chiropractic has always been about. And it isn't about what insurance pays for and how much money you charge for an adjustment. It's about how do you connect people and set them free. And well, there it is. <laughs> On that point, whenever I, before I adjust someone, I always ask an internal question to myself, to myself and to the person on the table. It's not about how do I fix you? It's how do I free you to go back to your freedom point, you know? And so when an adjustment is performed, it is an act of freedom. Now, an adjustment in and of itself can be a small thing, or it can be a very, very big thing, depending on the person, their life, their history, their presentation, what their emotional state, their spiritual state, their physical state, like you name it. I mean, there's a whole spectrum, right? But I love it when you say freedom because the, the simple act of an adjustment, given at the right place, at the right time, from the right heart and mind space, is an act of freedom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hands down. Absolutely. That's that's some chiropractic uh, um, reverence. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, and I bring the word reverence in because reverence is usually associated with uh, a spiritual practice. Like I'm, I'm reverent to a teacher or I'm reverent to a spirit or I'm, I have a deep, deep, founded love for, for, for something. Right. And I, I, I was taught that I didn't, I didn't have that when I came into school, I knew flying seven, wham, bam, crack them, get them out. Right. But the, the masters that of the feet that I, I stood at the, the Jay Camerics, the Marvins, the uh, Eric Rubens, like people, incredible, incredible, incredible people. Uh, taught me that. And now I have that. And it's my responsibility to share that reverence with uh, the people that I have the opportunity to teach because um, it is worth the adjustment in this profession are worthy of reverence, in my opinion. Some people might not think and that's okay. But I believe it is because especially, you know, now that you know, had a couple of years of practice under my belt, to see what can happen when someone undergoes a series of adjustments, whether it's two, three, four months, and to see the state where they started and to see the state where they end and the massive transition chiropractic had in that transition is, that to me is, I'm like, wow, how lucky am I that I get to facilitate that transition without any expectation of anything in return. Like that's divine mission stuff, you know, like 
I mean, Didi said it too. It's like, it's the moral and spiritual duty of every chiropractor to be the greatest chiropractor they can be, to free humanity of the, the chains that hold us back, or I forget the exact language, but essentially it is that. It's my, it's my moral, ethical, and spiritual duty to be the best damn chiropractor I can be. And I'm committed to that for the rest of my life. End of story, no more talking. <sighs> you know? <laughs> So what would be one piece of advice you would give to a struggling student if you want them to be the best version of themselves? One word, train. Find people who train. If they're struggling, they're not surrounding themselves by people who train, typically, in my experience. So you need to find, you need to look, you need to network, you need to get out of your little bubble. We call it your suck bubble, right, which happens, right? And you need to reach out to people who are accomplished adjusters or are ahead of the game. And then you need to study with them. You need to spend time with them. You need to befriend them and to become and to get the habits of what they're doing. Is it a morning routine? Is it morning training? Is it a breath work? Is it meditation? Is it movement? Are you training in the gym at lunch? Like there's so many strategies to go from zero to hero in a chiropractic sense in a very short amount of time. And when I was in school, if I ever felt like I was dragging or whatever, or not where I wanted to be, I would level up and I would go to more trainings and surround myself with people who are better than me. How do, you feel, how do you feel about students picking their schools based on geography? Bad idea. Bad idea. Um, you need to go, and when I say you need, I mean anyone listening to this. Each school has very different belief systems. Uh, they have different student bodies. Their, uh, their governing bodies believe different things, uh, allow students to do different things. Um, and so you need to really get in and dig in and see what is going, what school is going to have the atmosphere environment that is going to foster my growth as a chiropractor, but as a human being. Because when you become a better human being, you become a better chiropractor, right? And a lot of the schools, now I can say this because I go to a lot of the schools. I teach at a lot of the schools. And a lot of them do not have an atmosphere for fostering masterful chiropractors. There is something seriously wrong with that. The chiropractic school has become too much of a business. Chiropractic school is a hell of a business. You have a couple hundred students paying eight or nine thousand dollars a quarter. Uh, do the math. That's a big business, right? Chiropractic school. I would hope someday goes back to the purpose and mission of creating masterful chiropractors. What if? Like, what if that happened? I don't know if you guys have heard, but that's why Kairos University has been created. Right, So all the lead facilitators of Kairos Training Culture with special guests, we created an online university and starting in next week for 10 weeks, we're going to be giving one lesson a day for 10 weeks on anything in science, business, philosophy, and beingness. We literally have gone and created an online school to fill the void and gap of which nearly all students experience. That's big. That's big shoes. Big shoes. Big shoes. Uh, you know, guys like, I mean, guys like Brett Jones and Jordan Fairley, they are the masterminds uh, behind that. And, you know, obviously as a lead facilitator, we're grateful that they reach out to the tribe uh, to come and be, I don't know, like the word professors, but uh, teachers and facilitators for these, this massive group of people that have chosen to sign up and start taking classes with. So, yeah, it's science, art, philosophy, technique, so adjusting technique, and beingness, capital B, capital E, E-ness, right? Which, I don't know, some say three pillars, some say five pillars. Just be a great human, you'll be a great chiropractor. <laughs> I believe that. Uh, I know we're coming up on the edge of our time together today, but I, I do want you to share some... Uh, insights about yourself. I know that you're big time into training. You mm -hmm. like to read. 
Um, maybe tell us some of your some of your hobbies are and uh, what do you like to listen to? Oh, um, uh, I'll I'll be very honest right now. My hobby is my business. Um, first year, you know, first, first year in business, right? People say you're going to be married to your business. Uh, yeah, kind of, you know. Um, honestly, right now, I don't have a lot of hobbies. I know it sounds kind of lame to say, but uh, everything I do, I do with that that obsession because I want to care for people and have the biggest leap in consciousness effect on people as possible. And I know that I know that happens when this office is full, right? And I have to sacrifice other things to do that. Will I always be going at the pace I am now? No, but I'm super committed to getting this up and going as, as fast as I humanly can. Yes, I'll take weekends off here and there, but I'm solely dedicated to the work that I do here, probably to the uh, disgruntlement of my partner. Uh, sorry, Hannah, if you're watching, but uh, we make it up in other ways. So, um, and to be honest, like, I have a five minute commute, so I don't listen to many, you know, I don't many people talk or podcasts or anything like that. Um, and as far as reading goes, you know, I read, like I said, the, the books that bring in knowledge uh, from non earthly sources. Like, well, what are the sages saying? What are the, what are the Tibetan masters saying? Right? Like what kind of information are they transmitting and bringing here into this earth plane? That's what lights my fire. That's what gets me excited. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to really read or invest my energy into anything that doesn't excite the hell out of me to be quite honest. Right. And so, um, uh, but as far as anything personally, um, I love to train. I love the source here. Um, I love creating an environment where people can heal, grow, adapt, and evolve and become a, a better human being. This is, a, this is an incubator for human development, just like Kairos training culture is for the consciousness development of a chiropractor. Newsflash, Kairos training culture is a consciousness development group disguised as a chiropractic training company. <laughs> Cats out of the bag. Oops. Right. <laughs> but isn't any great chiropractic seminar, right? Like your consciousness will literally be different from the time that you start to the time that you're done. It's just having the verbiage and the language to communicate that. And so people don't come just to go through some motions or to do some breath work or do some movement or to learn some adjustments. No, your consciousness changes when you perceive things differently than you did before and your brain processes that information differently and you integrate it differently. That's how a consciousness change happens. And the more people that do that, the greater profession we'll have and the more people that will be helped into the future, thus humanity will change for the better. Well, you are definitely stepping into your own. I appreciate you uh, sharing so freely and so openly and uh, delivering from the source. Um, it's uh, really nice to have you on as uh, our episode 215. And it's just a real honor to be able to share your story. And you do it the right way, man. You keep free speech alive and well in this beautiful profession. God, and keep it open. Love and appreciate you guys for providing the platform and the opportunity for me to, to share and to transmit what everything that I've gathered in my, you know, coming up on seven, eight years in the chiropractic profession and um, keep doing what you're doing. Like you say, you never know who hears these messages, how it's going to change their life. Right. You never well, the, know. Thing, the thing is that we all have to understand is um, there are a lot of greats and that's what our uh, tagline is learning from the greats. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that there are a lot of greats in chiropractic and uh, all chiropractors are great in their own arena. And we just have to keep telling their stories. Oh. And we're, we're always just one story away. And that's another tagline of ours here is one story away, keep hustling. Mm -hmm. And we do keep free speech alive and well in chiropractic because no one controls our guerrilla radio, which is Cairo Hustle. Yeah. And, uh, we, we just, uh, we go hard and we harvest the message, we disseminate the message. And the thing I really think going forward that's gonna make this really become something of a uh, 
cult classic, maybe not bestseller, is that chiropractic is a cult classic profession. It's not a bestseller. Mm-hmm. And if we just keep the, the channels of communication open, then we're going to inspire the minds and we're going to inspire more lives. And people are going to eventually be able to download like the D.D. Palmer um, meditation from the early part of our conversation. People mm-hmm. are going to download and understand why chiropractic is vital to the development and advancement of humanity and human potential and human reverence is going to evolve when we have a culture that understands that the adjustment isn't just about the symptom, it's about the physiology shift. And that when people start getting adjusted regularly, it uh, makes a better father and a mother and a brother and a son, but it also makes a better planet. And people are more curious and they're more helpful and they feel good and they smile more and they say, what's up? And I think that that's a huge part of why we do this show is the profession just, damn it, it needs more media leverage. Mm-hmm. And if we can give that opportunity um, eight times a month, uh, that's what our, our mission is right now. And that's our sole purpose is to deliver this message eight times a month um, until we decide that we are ready to go 20 times a month. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, I think in uh, true Sid E. Williams fashion, the quote, keep the faith, turn the crank. It applies <laughs> to all of us. Well, uh, Luke has a few more questions for you here. I just want to know where can people go uh, if they want to find out about the seminars you put on or if they want to learn about the source, where can people go? Sure, sure. so sourcechirodenver.com. That's how you're going to be able to find the website. You'll learn about me, Dr. Seth, Dr. Ryan. And, and Hannah, my partner, she receives office manager. She runs the front. She makes sure all the back end stuff happens. Uh, from there, you can connect with me on Instagram at Dr. Darren Murphy, Facebook, Dr. Darren Murphy, YouTube, Dr. Darren Murphy. I have all sorts of adjustment videos, adjustment flows. That's where I do a lot of the, the seminar promotions and people can hear about the seminar promotions, which are delivering the lightning. That's the neck adjusting seminar. And then art of the anterior dorsal which is a specific kind of adjustment meant really from, you know, the upper part of the back to the mid to lower part of the spine as well. T1 down to L3, L4. Um, All, you know, one day seminars and really geared for the chiropractor and chiropractic student to help them become more connected to self, but really come to a greater place of understanding and certainty with what the adjustment is and how to provide it. From that place of love, from that place of reverence, from that place of positive intention, so that when that that energetic transfer is made from chiropractor to person on the table, it is a clear message, it is a confident message, it's a safe message, and one of trust. That's what's so big. Amen. Amen Well, next time I'm in Denver, I'll definitely uh, shoot you a message and see if we can't get together. Absolutely. Appreciate you for making some time for us today. And, uh, yeah, we'll just keep on turning the crank. All right, guys. Keep turning the crank. Love you. Appreciate you. Thank you for this opportunity to share. And uh, any other time, let's do it. You're in Denver. Let's meet up. All right. Talk soon, brother. All right, guys. Peace. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.